I want to welcome everybody for joining the second workshop for downtown Markdale. I'm going to ask Wai Ying to just keep an eye on the microphones and mute them. It would be terrific if everyone could mute their microphones until the conversation part of the meeting. My name is Donna Hine. I'm a partner at the Planning Partnership who've been asked by Gray Highlands to help with the visioning exercise. On the call is my business partner, Wai Ying DiGiorgio. She's going to wave. And Robin Chubb, an associate at the Planning Partnership, is going to wave. And they're both urban designers and landscape architects. And together, we're going to help um, with the conversation today. You, you might notice if you click on the list of participants, you'll see uh, many of your counselors have joined the call and staff from Gray Highlands. Everybody is very interested in listening to what the community has to say. So that is terrific. And the one benefit of the pandemic is that we're able to record our meetings. And I know all of council and staff are gonna be listening to both recordings to learn what was discussed. We're working with a really great steering committee for the downtown Markdale visioning exercise. It includes uh, Michelle Harris, who's on the call. She's the director of economic and community development for the municipality. Krista House, who's an economic and community development officer. Karen Govan, who's the CAO of the municipality. And we have three uh, residents. We've got David Sysom. And David, can you just wave your hand? Who's founding principal? Can you just wave, David? founding principal of Montgomery Sysom Architects in Toronto, and he's also a member of Toronto's design review panel. And Elizabeth Sysom is gonna wave, and she's um, also an architect and a former assistant vice president of planning at the University of Toronto, and more recently at Harvard. They both lived in the Beaver Valley in the Markdale community for over 30 years with their three kids. So they have a long history in the community. And Jim Harold, who's also going to wave his hand, who many of you may know as the chair of the Great Highlands Economic Development Advisory Group. And Jim um, comes to the committee as a resident of Great Highlands with lots of business, municipal and economic development experience. He's been an adjunct or he is an adjunct professor of economic health and geography. He's taught at U of T and two other universities. So we've had a really um, great, many really great working sessions with that committee. We've got about a 20 minute presentation to take you through what we've learned so far, what we've heard, a little bit of context, and then Wai Ying's going to go through some really early thinking on a concept. We've got lots of time for conversation at the end. Uh, so I would like to get through the presentation and then we're going to pause. We can go back and forth to whatever drawings you want up on the screen. I'm not going to be monitoring the chat box in real time, but share your thoughts uh, along the way in the chat box. Wai Ying's going to be keeping an eye on it and she'll um, bring whatever needs to be brought to the attention of the whole, the whole group. So with that... I'm going to get started and everybody can see the screen that I'm sharing and you will uh, recognize, I get people oriented, Toronto Street going north, south, Main Street, east, west. And the area outlined in red is the focus of the downtown visioning exercise. It, it includes lands on the west side that are about two acres and lands on the east side that's 0.3 of an acre. So terrific opportunity um, for change in downtown Markdale. And when you squint your eyes and look at the size of the red box and compare it to the existing commercial retail uses, some community facilities in town, you get a sense of the scale that we're talking about. If we come out a little bit more context for everyone. Here's the area that we focused on, Highway 10 and Main Street. We're just locating um, some of the uh, community facilities and amenities, the golf course, the arena, the gray, ga gray gables, the municipal office. The yellow radius is a five minute walk to the intersection and a 10 minute walk to the intersection. So you get to realize pretty quickly an ideal situation of 
Markdale being within a 10 minute walk of its center, we know that Markdale serves a much uh, bigger area in Beaver Valley as well. And what you're seeing on this uh, map, we're overlaying uh, some of the development applications that are known. And so the res residential development where my cursor is, the future hospital over on the bottom left, some other residential development uh, applications up here on the northeast. And we know that a couple of the houses are, are, are under construction. The golf course, the arena, park, library, the current hospital. We um, had a chance to talk to a few people uh, about a month ago, councillors and some business owners. And th this is a snapshot of some of the things that I learned from those conversations. And this screen is sharing what people were saying they thought was the reason Markdale was suffering a little bit. So not enough people living uh, in Markdale because the municipal office moved away. Um, it's not because the municipal office moved to the, to the south. People said it's because Talisman closed, because the grocery store came out of town. So this was their perception on what some of the um, reasons were for some of the decline. Some of the things that I gleaned from the conversation had to do with a larger context. And so people talked about other lands and sites around Markdale that could do with some visioning as well. Um, I heard about a notion of having an idea of nodes and corridors in Gray Highland. So coming way up and putting Markdale in the context of Flesherton and some of the other villages and towns in Gray Highlands. Whatever happens on the site had to spur economic development, had to be something new and something that added value. And then others said this is a terrific chance to really showcase some of the things that Grey Highlands is doing really well, whether that's with respect to landscape or a sewage treatment or trails or whatever it is, we could showcase that on this site. Then almost everybody had ideas about specific uses and that really ran the gamut and often there was um, diverging views on the same topic like municipal office, yes or no, library, yes or no. But everybody recognized the importance of getting more people living in the center to support the shops and services. People talked about retail uses and more restaurants and maybe moving the beer store and um, that it, along with being retail and commercial uses, it had to be something to draw people. And so often people mentioned theater, arts, auditorium, some kind of community hub or community center. And then other things like swimming pool, splash pad, upper story offices, band shells. So anything, I, ideas that they had that draw people to a magnet of downtown. Then there were some comments that I clustered around this about new buildings or new developments. So lots of people weigh in on height and the sensitivity to taller buildings has to be eye catching, has to respect and enhance small town Ontario, can't, buildings can't be higher than the fire hall. As always, whenever we do work in town centers, people talk about traffic and parking. And as always, full spectrum of opinion. There's enough parking, there isn't enough parking, it should be downtown, it should be on the periphery. And so that is very much a part of our job to make recommendations on what that balance is and to share experiences of what other communities are doing with respect to parking. A, a little bit of mapping just to put it into some context. So you're going to always see the red outline of the land on the west and the land on the east. And this, a snapshot, snapshot from the official plan land use designations that says we're we're well within the downtown area land use designation then we looked at zoning we are within the downtown commercial zone this pink area the blue is recognizing the existing uh, hospital we mapped the open space just so we could see the pattern and what things we could possibly connect to. So the school, 
cemetery, the golf course, King Edward Park and the arena, the rail trail, the sports fields. We wanted to understand trails and sidewalks so we could um, make sure that we were providing connections right through um, Markdale. So the yellow line is mapping where there's a, a sidewalk on one side of the road, both sides or, or not at all, where the uh, rail trail is. And so we're, we're interested where, the, um, where it's discontinuous, where people are beating their own track from one street to another. And again, you're seeing the, oop, you're seeing the, I keep doing that, sorry. You are seeing the five minute walk and the 10 minute walk to the main intersection. Then we're also interested in the road hierarchy. So we absolutely know that this is a provincial highway. We're gonna hopefully in the conversation talk about other centers that have a provincial highway as their main street county collector, county local road, and then the local residential streets and municipal roads in light yellow. You can see in some areas they're really well connected from one side to the other and other areas it's a little bit more disconnected. We map parking and we purposely map private and public parking and then did a tally on the total number of spaces and so it's important um, for us to absolutely understand where there's public parking and how close it is to the main intersection but also private parking where we know that you might be parking there and dashing into the bank or the pharmacy or where we're going to the beer store and we'll talk about parking as as part of the some of our early ideas for the site as well heritage the designated buildings and the others that have heritage value. And you can see that most of the main street buildings have been identified as having heritage value in the two beautiful churches that frame Highway 10 driving north. And then building height, because we know that height, there's a particular sensitivity around height. We wanna understand the current condition. So the orange two-story, Red is where it pops up to three stories. And then yellow is a single story building, so one story buildings. Um, we did just a, a little bit of a scan of other small towns in Ontario. And we do this just to share some observations of what we think are some of the uh, raw ingredients of these successful town centers. And so, We've done lots of work in Huntsville. We've just finished work in Erin. We know Alora and Bracebridge, Creemore, Paris, Ontario, Cannington, Coburg. And when we squint our eyes, and I'm sure everybody on the call has your own favorite uh, town centers that you visited or traveled to or have family living in, we see a few things that are common. We see that there's typically brick construction. We see that typically on the, the main street, it's two or three stories, that it's primarily small storefronts, that it's typically independent uh, retailers, that the buildings can have a variety of styles and conditions, but what we always see is that these town centers are really intimately connected to the adjacent neighborhood so that it's easy to get to the main street. And then for some that are in the middle of beautiful landscapes that the views open up and reveal the beautiful landscapes that are surrounding those centers. And that's really obvious in Aaron, and this is Bracebridge. So some of them just have the expansive views into the landscape. So then when we do our own kind of list of what we think are some of the raw ingredients, we think that they are things like uh, successful vibrant centers have beautiful tree-lined streets and urban squares and urban parks where the community comes together for celebrations and events, that there's lots of reasons to come downtown, this power of 10, something that's been written about that people have to 
have multiple reasons. So you're coming down for an event or an attraction or going to a specific shop or going to the dentist or going to get your hair cut or going to the library. There's lots of reasons to come downtown. Convenience. So as a visitor, it's easy to navigate your way around to find where you park, to know where there's public washrooms, that there's reliable hours of operation, that there's a critical mass living within walking distance of downtown to help support those shops and services. And that typically we see, and it's in small, medium and large size uh, centers that the private sector has some confidence in coming in and redeveloping because the public sector is uh, providing ongoing investment and support in those centers. So whether it's through streetscape improvements or a community improvement plan like Gray Highlands has, or um, work on public places like parks and squares, there's obvious incentive, or obvious investment and commitment to that center. And that the centers all build on their own character and sense of place, their existing assets. And that in the end, there's a broad mix of shops and services and restaurants and cafes and places to live. Um, we have watched, I hope everybody on the call has it on the radar to watch the hot doc that's on TV, on TVO, on Gray Roads. We watched the, it a couple of days ago. I did. It was a fascinating documentary specifically on Markdale. And it was in that that I remembered about getting some historic images. And um, I think everybody can see how thriving Markdale has been over the decades as a, as a real magnet and a center for the community. So today we are exploring what some of the opportunities for change are. So here you see the TD bank in the corner. So we're gonna be looking specifically at our, uh, our site. So the um, site across from the Fire and Ice restaurant, the Fire Hall, and then this corner as well. So I'm going to um, turn it over to Wai Ying to just start to walk through. We're going to start at a higher level before we lock on to the, the two primary um, chunks of property. So Wai Ying, can you just take it away? Just unmute. Thank there you, you go. Donna. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so when we look at the broader context of Markdale, um, both within that five minute and 10 minute uh, walk, as well as beyond, the importance of the downtown that Donna's described into pictures and the words um, really becomes apparent. Uh, and as a geographic center, as well as the commercial core of the community, it has a pivotal, very important role in the health and vitality of the community. Uh, the purpose of this diagram that we put together is to illustrate that the downtown is an integral and important part of the community uh, and to identify a potential future structure uh, that will enhance this role. So that's not only the downtown, but the entire community within the context of its uh, surrounding environment. The, the concept starts to uh, look at how we build on the character and assets uh, that exist already. And for example, I'll go through the, the list of items that you're seeing on the plan, the first one being the existing natural heritage or what we've called and illustrated as this big swath of a green frame that's really grounded in the natural heritage system that surrounds the property. And the word that I used in the last section was that it hugs the community. And I think that's a really interesting uh, and apt word in this case. It provides a natural boundary that wraps the community and the opportunity to further develop a connected trail system. And we've heard in other sessions how important uh, trails are to the community. And that in turn is linked to both the existing um, potential existing neighborhoods and the fabric of those neighborhoods as, a, as well as any uh, potential future neighborhoods identified in the areas beyond um, the downtown and the downtown neighborhoods. The other thing that we're trying to highlight on here is uh, the importance and significance of the existing rail trail. Um, and it's an amazing recreational asset um, and it allows for access and visibility uh, of the natural heritage system. And in this plan, what we're saying is that it's important and it should really have more 
um, more prominence within the within the plan uh, and within the future development of the community and looking for opportunities to make that even better than it is today. We're also showing highlighted in the green arrows, the, the double ended arrows uh, around the downtown core, as well as along the bottom there, this idea of a green street. And these green streets are what we've identified as important streets. Um, important in that they link uh, the trail system, for example, and they link open spaces and natural features. And so with the design of these streets, we're hoping that they have this enhanced um, regard for pedestrian safety and access, as well as uh, the accompanying streetscape elements that would go along with that to make that more comfortable and more safe and more green. Similarly, when we look at the big red um, lines at cross at the crossroads of, of the downtown. Uh, we've identified these streets, Toronto and Maine, as the primary corridors uh, whereby people are, you know, coming to the town. Uh, we're also in identifying at the at the intersection of where these main corridors intersect with the green frame that there's this opportunity uh, to create these gateways that announce um, arrival and sense of place. And in these locations, we're imagining that there's a whole host of opportunities, including streetscape enhancements and signage that could really make these the doorways to your community. Um, so with all of these, uh, sorry, and then the last thing I wanted to point out too um, was the orange lines. I mean, there was a question in the last session about what these were. So we're indicating with these, the, the grid of orange lines, which are conceptual, um, uh, that there's this notion of connectivity that, can, that continues um, further beyond what already exists in your gridded street pattern and your trails networks. And it, it's starting to imply that if and when there's any future development in these areas beyond the downtown and residential neighborhoods, that they respect this idea of connectivity and respect this idea of being part of a growing community within the boundary of what I started with describing as the green frame. So with all of these combined elements, the intent really is to reinforce connectivity, as I mentioned. Uh, it's to reinforce the character of the, of the community and the surrounding areas, as well as to promote the sense of identity for Mark, Markdale as a community. We wanna make sure that movement throughout the community and to the community is safe uh, and that it's easy and that it's actually enjoyable. Uh, we also wanna highlight that special places identified in the asterisks on the plan, special places, destinations, and locations are um, highlighted and that there's connections to these places. We wanna to try to promote uh, unifying and linking elements that start to stitch the many parts of the community together. And so this is the context in which the downtown and the subject lands highlighted in red will be considered uh, on the next slides. So the next slide, uh, before we get there, I, want, I wanted to um, highlight that what we're also taking into consideration are a number of key guiding principles that have been distilled from the many conversations uh, that have taken place prior to this um, prior to this workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, Don has done a really great job of summarizing them earlier in the uh, previous slides. So these principles speak to what we've heard thus far, including the desire for a variety of uses and housing in the downtown. It speaks to the importance of drawing more people to the downtown, um, not only including visitors, but also residents that's, that live there 24-7. Um, uh, um, it absolutely speaks to the importance of having a more pedestrian-oriented downtown that will also make it more attractive, again, to people who want to come and visit and live in this type of environment. We heard a lot about the natural rural setting of the town and the deep desire to maintain uh, relevant connections to, the, to its agricultural um, heritage. And as urban designers, we fully appreciate the important role that public space has in attracting people and promoting vibrant downtowns. And of course, we also understand the sensitivities around development in smaller historic towns such as Markdale. Uh, and we know that it's important to promote developments that are compatible within this context. Um, and it'll be important for not only the existing uh, fabric, but the future parts of future developing parts of the community as well. So with that, on the next several slides, um, we're going to illustrate and describe a few scenarios uh, that demonstrate these principles. So in this first scenario, we're working um, entirely within the properties of the municipally owned uh, lands highlighted in red. 
Uh, we've illustrated the idea of new buildings, which are those brown blocks that you see on the plan. And we're illustrating some ideas about new landscapes, generally colored in the brighter green. So buildings on the West property are arranged to frame Toronto Street uh, as one of the principles. And it's also um, arranged at the corner of, of Toronto and Maine to complete the crossroads and provide a built form presence in that very prominent location. The buildings on the site are also uh, intended to play a role in framing a new village square that's situate, situated along Toronto Street. So the new square um, has, it's wrapped by buildings, but it also has public frontage along that street. Uh, we imagine that there will be active commercial uh, and or workspaces within the ground floor of all of the buildings that we're showing uh, with residential uses above the ground floor. We're also suggesting uh, in the middle, the middle building as we move west, those portions, that there are at grade residential uses um, that may be provided. So when we say that, we mean front doors and front stoops and um, entrances that provide access directly to those units. We're imagining that these front doors open onto a common muse um, or courtyard condition that's landscaped and provides access and connections to the public sidewalk. And so that also provides some amount of private amenity for, for the residents of those units. On the east property at the corner, um, within the confines of the municipally owned lands, we're imagining that there is a small infill development possible behind the existing bank building. And so in that building, we, we can see that there might be a commercial or live work function on the ground floor, again, with residential units above. And again, these units have front doors um, that open onto a landscape muse that has walkways and, and plantings. So then um, with this and the other scenarios, we're recommending a whole rebalancing of the streets in the downtown core. So when I say that, I mean, when we went out there and looked at the public realm of the downtown and walked around, it, it felt very much like it was a car dominated environment where paving um, and, and cars really um, took precedent over, over, the, over the pedestrians. So in order to make a more safe and inviting place for people to walk and be in, we're suggesting a minimization of the existing driveways along Toronto Street. Here, let me just uh, mute that. Okay, keep going. Thank you. There you go. So we're suggesting a minimization of the um, private access driveways to the, to the sites on the east side of Toronto Street to the extent possible. And by doing so, we want to introduce and start to carve out space within that public right of way for sidewalks and sidewalks that are separated from the actual, uh, actual traffic uh, by a planted, pedest um, planted boulevard with trees and, and, and shrubs. Um, we're also imagining that with the introduction of the landscape boulevards that separate people from the cars, there could be opportunities to uh, it reintroduce this traditional notion of a rural cross section uh, that has a rural character. So um, many of you may be familiar with the, you know, the old ditches where the water used to collect, but they would be planted and there isn't necessarily always a need to have a full barrier curb um, uh, along that edge. And then with the plantings, we imagine that it has another function of um, managing stormwater runoff. Um, it could filter water, it could be a bio bioretention swale, and it could also be a showcase for uh, the plantings and the types of, um, types of landscapes that are found within, within the area, such as grasses and wildflowers and native shrubs and, and trees. Notionally, the, the orange arrow that we're showing uh, that zigzags across the site is meant to indicate that there is a desire to have an east-west connection through that block. And whether it's the zigzag pattern or not, uh, we're recognizing that there is at some point, um, some future point in time, um, the opportunity to create a pedestrian link as well. And that would really be, um, really would function to, serve, uh, to connect not only in the new Village, village Square we're proposing on the west side, um, but also connect to the existing park on the east.
Next slide. Oh, sorry. It's okay. So Here we go. Yeah. So in this next oh, scenario, sorry. this one. Did we do two? Yeah, no, we haven't done yet. two. Yeah. yeah okay. We're on two now. Yeah. So Thanks. scenario two, we're showing um, a possibility for collaboration with the adjacent properties on the corner sites. You'll see that the buildings that we're showing the corner sites peek out of the red boundaries that are the municipally owned land. So what this does is it opens up the opportunity to create a more robust corner with more building presence and the ability to create um, a landmark building in these locations. We're also suggesting that buildings could, in this scenario, be slightly taller than the four stories. We're suggesting it might even go up to six stories in some instances. And of course, a detailed study would be required to demonstrate that the six stories or taller would not have an impact on the adjacent residential neighborhoods. Things like um, stepping down and strategically locating uh, the height of the building away from those areas would be some options to think about. I wanted to also use this plan to point out a notion for reimagining the entrance to King Edward Park in the library site and the realignment of the two street intersections um, to make a landscape roundabout that not only makes the entrance to this uh, asset uh, grander, more ceremonial, but it also tries to regularize the traffic flow and create a safer pedestrian flow in this area. Next slide. Oh, sorry. There we go. So in this third and last scenario, we've taken a step back to look not only at the municipally owned properties, um, but to look at some of the other areas in the immediate areas in the downtown where possible long term development may be considered. Uh, the illustrated buildings and public spaces and streets, just as with the two previous uh, diagrams, demonstrate what a mix and variety of uses, including additional housing, would look like. Uh, the diagram is also showing a direct and very strong green link from east to west, uh, from Isla to the park site, through both public and private areas. It shows more green space where we terminate the green link, and that's um, the, a notion for landscaping and green space where the existing parking, parking lot is for the park. And then the last thing I wanted to point out on here was that the arrangement of buildings um, beyond the municipally owned sites are arranged so that they demonstrate the key principles of framing the streets, creating front doors um, on the streets, creating eyes on the streets, and providing a transition from um, the commercial core of the downtown to the residential neighborhoods away from that core. So on the next several slides, um, I wanted to highlight that with all three of the scenarios we've talked about, um, there are a few key moves or takeaways that we'd like to uh, think about. Uh, one of them is this importance of the mix of different uses in the downtown. And so the pictures on the screen are showing you some examples of what that might look like in terms of the form and the massing and the style and even the materials. And But most importantly, how they address the street in terms of providing um, providing life to the streets, basically, and, 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 and providing definition to the street. Next. Uh, we also want to talk about, of course, the buildings that frame the street um, and public spaces and how they animate them. So these examples show what um, a, green, a green square or a park in the downtown might look like with buildings that frame it and buildings that actually have act, active uses at grade that spill out onto these spaces. And similarly, the same notion would apply to the main street as well. And then on the next slide, uh, ideas for... There we go. Yep. Ideas for, sorry, I, an idea that animating um, the downtown is really important through things like public art and special paving, um, having a, a coordinated suite of furnishings in the downtown that let, have allow people places to sit and linger and rest and meet up with friends and chat. We heard a lot about that. And then of course, we don't wanna forget that, you know, the winter months are quite long. We wanna make sure that we do have the opportunity to introduce activities and attractions in the downtown, even in the winter months. Next slide. Um, 
I already mentioned this notion of taking back the car dominated streets in the downtown for pedestrians. And so when we say that some of these examples show you some fundamental and very simple things to reintrodu reintroduce to your, to your streets downtown, things like um, a continuous and, and connected consistent sidewalk on, on all the streets. Um, that have trees lining them and separating them from the traffic. The idea of having walkways, as I mentioned, even across private um, private development sites to create those mid-block links uh, and really serve those desire lines between destination and destination. Uh, we don't want to forget about um, the front yards of the residential areas in the downtown and, and that they provide these great opportunities to plant um, and to grow things uh, beyond a grass lawn. Uh, and of course, when I mentioned the landscape muse, it's yet another walkway type that crosses private development, but it can be accessed by the public and it can be beautifully landscaped so that it actually uh, feels like part of the whole pedestrian system in the downtown. Next slide. We want to think about as we move forward with this vision for the downtown, an idea for a main street strategy or program that starts to look at not only um, you know, the preservation and identification of the, the heritage valued buildings, but how do you treat and how do you have functioning businesses? Um, how can we support the functioning businesses with design um, and a consistency in the approach of things like storefronts and windows and signage and access and a whole array of, um, as I mentioned, public realm elements that support those functions. And then the last one is really an important one that we've heard, a theme that we've heard over and over again about um, the great, uh, the character and the great asset that we have in Grey Highlands. And so, you know, building on this, there's so many opportunities for greening the community, not only um, within sort of the private areas, as I mentioned on front lawns and and yards, but also within the public realm. So within, within right of oh, sorry. sorry. Within right of ways and parks, you know the notion of the you know the um, the rural the rural ditches and the swales that can be planted, the ideas for planting even parking lots, um, making sure that your park designs are not um, are not too high maintenance and that they do introduce things like low maintenance native approaches to their design and planting and of course uh, where we can uh, to introduce trees uh, along the main street today. So then the next slide is showing you if we were to take all of these ideas um, on the sites, what would it look like and how would it be different from today? And then the next slide to tomorrow. So you can see in this um, image, quick sketch that Robin did, uh, the idea of where the building would address the street on the corner and really provide this built form presence with active uh, street uh, shop fronts along the street, uh, people walking along safer streets that have boulevards with trees and a separation of a sidewalk from the traffic areas. And you can see in the distant background, uh, the other building on the other side of that, that proposed village, um, village square. And then on the next slide, another view of what this reimagining might look like uh, from the east side of Tor uh, Toronto Street looking back at the parking lot and then potential future, what it might look like with that new village green at the center, at the foreground, um, that new building in the middle ground with shops again that front onto and open and spill out onto that green space. And then if you look in the distant background, a notion for some of those residential units that I mentioned that front onto a muse that extends all the way down um, to that planted area uh, that terminates Isla. And okay. so that's where I'm going to end my part of the presentation. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Um, so just before we launch into some of the questions that I love to get your responses to, uh, Robin, can you share the first poll? I just want to understand who's on the call. And I'm interested whether you live within a 10 minute walk of downtown Markdale. And I put this map up just so you can see the, the radius here. So we we'll just give it a couple minutes. So we have a few people that are within a close walk of the, the main center. Okay. Let's give it one more second. 
Okay, so we can stop that and share that. Thank you. So most of you don't live within a, a 10 minute walk. So that's very interesting. And then have six of you that are. And then the next one, I just want to know, can you launch number two? Just want to uh, see on the call if you own a business in Markdale. Okay, so it's good to see we have a few, a few business owners. That's fantastic. We had a couple on the last call as well. Okay, that's great. So we can share that. Thank you very much. So the first question that um, I am, we are interested in is, let me just get us advanced. I'm interested from your own perspectives, uh, what you think are the ingredients for successful, healthy, thriving downtown. And I'm really happy and look forward to hearing some examples of other places you know of that you think are good demonstrations of where all those ingredients come together to create a vibrant place. Um, we have uh, just over 30 people on the call. So I think what I'm going to do with this numbers, just to get us started, I'm going to go down through the list and I'm going to call out names, just first names. And um, watch for your mic to come on. You don't have to come on if you don't want to. And if I don't see it coming on, I'm going to go down to the next person. So the first couple I have on my list is Allison. And then I have Ashley. And then I have Barbara. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Um, okay, what? Yeah. What do you think? Um, Successful ingredients and any place that you've been to that you think is a great example. I think small, center. interesting stores that yeah. carry unique items, uh, unique food, unique yeah. artwork, um, artist co-ops. I love artist co-ops or yeah. you know, art studios. Um, I think the trees are great. I like the idea of the small retail stores. And um, for towns that I think have something that are really special is Midland and Stratford. Okay. Yeah, those are great examples. Yep. Midland is a great town. It is. It's, yeah. yeah, lots of interesting places. Okay. That is great. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Um, then I have Betty and Roy. I was just going to say, I think it's Goderich. Yes. Yes. Town. Yes. We've done lots of work there too. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. And what's special about Goderich for your, from your perspective, Betty and Roy? The green space yeah. and, and the center. Yeah. The ease of going from one part of the town to another through the green area. Okay. okay. I think the, uh, another thing about uh, a successful towns are a, quite a variety of stores and yeah. destination experiences. Okay, okay. So they could be galleries, they could be yeah. restaurants, they could be whatever. Okay, thank you for that. Here's an interesting tidbit on Goderich. We um, were retained to help them after the hurricane tornado came through town. How long ago was that? It was 2014 um, or 2013, I remember. And our um, team led the process where the biggest trees that have ever been transplanted in, I believe it was North America, were transplanted yeah. back into the downtown square when they were just completely wiped clean of all the vegetation. So the trees came in on giant transport trailers, huge celebration event. And people were standing on the side of the road, very emotional time, but it was amazing to be part of. Um, so let's I think keep- Interestingly too, when you, um, 
Betty, when you mentioned the greenness, the whole central square there is an arboretum. So every every tree yeah. has a tag that tells you what it is, and it's yeah. deliberately designed to have different trees. So there's no tree two trees alike. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, okay, let's keep going. So then I have Elizabeth um, Dingman. Yep, that's me. Hi, Hi Elizabeth. Yep, go Hi. ahead. Um, I just want to say that I'm so excited by the slides that you've shown. I, I'm so pleased that the town's hired some people with some experience in this, and this is a very exciting process. Okay, thank you. And thank um, you. the ingredients for a successful, healthy, and thriving town center, I mean, the municipality is responsible for creating the environment, not for putting in the actual stores and what they're going to yeah. be. Correct. So, yeah you know green space is great just anything that makes a place inviting yeah okay and not look flat and dull okay and what comes and, what comes to mind when you think of other places that are that a place that's inviting well I, you know if you want to like I, I I agree Goddard is an amazing town Stratford's a great town but even smaller and closer to home Creamore is a great town. Yeah, Creamore. It's a beautiful. tiny little town, yeah, and they yeah. just, you know, and it's got, yeah. you know, kind of the same dinky little main street that Markdale has, yeah. Yeah. but they've managed to keep it fresh. Yeah, yeah. And okay. yeah, you know, the the municipality can help guide towards that type of environment. Okay. Um, you know. Okay, that's a great so observation. Yeah. Creamar is a great example to very active business owners and yeah okay thank you Elizabeth Please. what about Graham hi how you doing hi Graham uh, just to echo the the last statement really glad to be seeing this get done um, for the two questions I think some of the important ingredients at least in my mind um, are community space perhaps something like a stage whether that's indoor or outdoor um, yeah. which just be used for a range of uses. Mm -hmm. And then also something, you know, might be a little nerdy or the history buff in me, but I love a good plaque. I love some, yeah. traditional, yeah. you know, yeah. such great history in the area, yes. you know, such interesting things always going on. And I'd love to see that get showcased, you know, for yeah. someone that's just visiting for the day or even for someone who is a local, it's always nice to read over and be reminded of kind of what happened in the past. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on in the future. Yeah. Now, also kind of in that same area, good wayfinding makes all the A hundred percent. Good signs that just let me know where the parks are, where the hospitals yes. are, you know, what's within a couple minutes walking distance. Yeah, could the not a couple agree. moments ago that had the circle that shows me, you know, what's within 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Having that physically on site can be very useful to say, you know, where can I get from here? Yeah. Um, and then something a little cheesy, but I know a lot of towns have put in signs that say the town name. I know Toronto did that, but elsewhere has done it as well. It might be cute to have something that says Markdale, a piece of public art, or something that does mm -hmm. state the town mm -hmm. name or the in, area it, name. In the big in the big letters, you mean like Ottawa yeah. has to and draw, yeah. Exactly. And you know, we you could have a spin on that. Maybe it doesn't have to just be the letters, maybe it's part of a mural or a, yeah. a bigger piece of art. But yeah. you know, I, I find as cheesy as that is, we are in the age where people like, you know, to take a good photograph. That's exactly um, right. That's exactly it, right. It can be, you know, for the, the younger folk, Instagrammable or, you know, just yeah, absolutely. To, to save and share is always a good thing, I think. Uh, I could, could not agree more with all of your points. I mean, who does not love a good story? You want to understand the story of the place. Exactly. and. Yeah, yeah, and uh -huh. there's so much of that. And I know there's some there's some plaques over at the park. Um, yeah. but even just to play upon that and the great watersheds in the area and the hikes yeah. and all yeah. that other great stuff. Um, that, I think it'd just be wonderful to have that there. Fantastic idea. And the wayfinding. I feel like I've said that over and over and over again over the past few days, but so important so people can get their bearings and understand what's where and you can market what's available within that five minute, two minute, five minute, 10 minute walk, what other shops and businesses are available. It's so important. Okay, that is great. Thanks. Yeah, sorry, just, just on that note of, of signs and history, and I forgot to mention it, which is my mistake, on that last scenario that I was describing, uh, where we had shown development um, in the immediate areas, I forgot to mention that with that development, part and parcel of it, at the cenotaph where the hospital is located would be, it's suggested that it be moved to the new 
Village Green. Oh, right. so we, oh, we would have front and center stage within within this new reimagined core. That would be wonderful. Yeah, I guess that transitions kind of into your second question. Uh, a town I often think of and I actually grew up there is Streetsville, which <laughs> is in the GTA area. It has a wonderful cenotaph right in the middle yeah. of town. And yeah. whether it's for a Remembrance Day ceremony or just yeah. you know an any day kind of activity, it's a gathering point. And it's yeah. somewhere where someone could perform or announce or just kind of be there for the community. Okay, that Streetsville is a great town. Okay, thanks, Graham. Thank you. Um, Jenna. Or hi, hi, Jenna. Uh, I'm I'm brand new to the area. I just moved up here in March, so oh, from the well, city. Well, uh, so welcome. It's really great to hear about. It. Thank you. <laughs> um, just thinking and you're, about and you're living. Mark are you? Dale. Are you living in Markdale, Jenna, or you're living in Grey Highlands elsewhere? I'm in Flesherton. Great. Okay. Yeah. In Flesherton, yeah. Just south. Perfect. Of yep. Um, so what I think about is obviously the aesthetics, right? When you first drive okay. into the, the town. So yeah. you mentioned kind of the promenade with the big trees, you know, like that boulevard type idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But also I saw on, on your presentation that the bank on the mm -hmm. northeast corner that potentially mm -hmm. could go, but I really love those heritage buildings, especially coming up from the city where everything is just gray and glass and cement. And so seeing the old historic buildings is something very you know, unique to small towns um, yeah. and like the different types of buildings, mm -hmm. um, but also okay. color. I think when I think of small streetscapes, I think of you know each, each row is a little bit different or each um, section of the building is a little bit different, but the color that's brought into those is also really kind of unique yeah. and, and different from the gray concrete yeah. concrete jungle of the city and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. if you're thinking about other people coming in that, you know, it's a unique experience. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, you want something that sets it apart. Okay, okay, thanks, Jenna. I hope, I hope I, the bank doesn't go though. I, I really love that You like that the, his, <laughs> the heritage building, yeah. I can, and, I can speak to that a little bit. I think when I we showed- I wish it wasn't a bank, you know, TD Bank, it's not yeah, bad, but yeah. if it was, you know, a, a little, um, like the bakery's on the other corner, but really the bakery should be in there because that would be stunning. You know, in oh, Flushington, there's, yes. there's that unique little strip there that has the bakery as well. So yeah, yeah if we could kick out TD, that would be great. Unless you're from TD, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, Ying, did you want to weigh in? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that the two options we showed, one where we're leaving the bank as it is and we're infilling behind it. And the second option where I showed that bigger blob, um, that bigger blob can absolutely incorporate the existing bank building into a new you know, new design. I, I don't know how it's going to be done, whether it's entirely intact or whether it's just the facade, but, you know, because that'll have to go through another study, but it, the opportunity is there to keep it. So there isn't, um, you know, there isn't an intent to say get rid of the bank at all. We're just looking at, you know, possibilities. That's all. Yeah, I'm thinking like yeah. the multi-use, right? In the city, mm -hmm. they do a lot of that where they keep the streetscape, but then they build, you know, up. They build yeah, yeah the and above around. It. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, lots of way to do it. The mm -hmm. multi-use or, or land use, right? The, the building's still useful. Um, <laughs> it just needs to be repurposed. I exactly. actually come from a heritage background. I'm an archaeologist. So we do a lot of oh. the landscapes and stuff. So okay. um, yeah, built heritage is a huge part of the cultural heritage. Yes, absolutely. Okay, very interesting. Okay, let me keep going. Um, John or Joyce? Yes, it's John Van Buren here. Yeah, hi, John. I'm with uh, Devin Lee Holmes. I'm VP of Development. So we're the probably the, the largest in, in the development uh, developer in the town at the moment. So yeah. we're developing the townhomes at the north of the town. And um, we're going to be servicing 172 new lots behind the, the new Foodland store. Okay. Next, yep. next year. So there's lots of things happening. So um, uh, for us, and obviously the new schools fronting on our, our development, which is key. Yeah. Um, we need uh, places for people to go and that's particularly downtown. And what I see happening is, uh, is moving the town hall downtown with a performing arts uh, component to it. I think that would be uh, pretty awesome. Uh, we know how successful Meaford is at all this. 
yeah. your performing arts building. Um, just some comments on what you've done downtown as far as the schematics. I love the idea of reducing some on-street parking and introducing some landscaped areas. I think that's mm -hmm. critical. Um, I didn't see a lot of really parking areas, um, mm -hmm. larger parking areas. I think um, there's a lot of people from outside the community that come into town, in particular weekenders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll need parking. So um, it's not just foot traffic. There's a lot of external traffic that comes mm -hmm. in. So Yeah, understood. Wayne, do you want to just weigh in quickly on... Um... I don't know okay. how quickly, but I'll weigh in for sure. Um, <laughs> so okay. with, all of, with all of the options that we're showing, uh, we're definitely assuming that there's some amount of mixture of um, aggregate parking, below grade parking, structured parking that would have to service uh, and support uh, the new yeah. buildings as well as uh, replace any parking that's taken away. Um, part and parcel of that thinking too is that we're going to, you know, Donna showed an earlier slide where we had went through and inventoried all the on-street parking and parking lots. So when we, we when we did our cursory review analysis of the of the site, we found that there was a lot of opportunity to expand the, um, the capacity for on-street parking beyond what's shown today. So I mean, a lot of those streets are really extra wide, lots of pavement. And I think just by defining and designating more places for on-street parking, you would get a lot more supply. Yeah. Um, and I think even if it's not within the five minute walking distance, I think once you have things in the downtown that are not only walkable, but um, the streets are walk worthy. This is a new thing that's happening in urban design. When the, when the community is walk worthy, people will go further and park further because what the, you know when they walk by things that are interesting, a 10 minute walk feels like a five minute walk. And, and you know, the corollary of that is that, you know, you might be five minutes somewhere, but if there's nothing to see, it feels like an age, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, the other comment I'd like to make is I, I really like the roundabout you show at uh, King Edward mm -hmm. Park. I think yeah. that's uh, an exciting feature and that area is so underutilized, I think. Um, okay. And the last comment I'd like to make, which has been a pet peeve of mine for years, I lived in the area for about 30 years, is the overhead major transmission line that goes through town yeah yeah that needs to yeah. be buried yeah you know, okay. somebody's got to bite the bullet and get that buried uh through the core okay. because it's such an eyesore so okay Are you offering <laughs> <laughs> talk to hydro <laughs> one <laughs> and and john let me just go back to your point about moving town hall with a performing arts um, yes. into the center what why why is that important from your perspective i know oh, i think it's an awesome drawing card Okay. Uh, perf performing arts theaters, uh, you know, uh, you know, cafes, bistros, uh, pubs, yeah. you know, uh, weekend entertainment. Uh, again, the weekend okay. influx is substantial around here. Yeah. Uh, being this close to Beaver Valley, and they're, they're looking for things to do Friday, Saturday night, Thursday nights, and now people living and working up here at the same time. Yeah. Uh, they want to go to these smaller towns and hang out. So, okay. um, Again, that's why parking that's is critical. Okay. 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 Thanks, John. You're welcome. Um, let me go. I think I had called on Joyce. I didn't see a mic coming on. So then I'm going to go to Kate. Hi, it's Hi, Kate, Kate and Margaret Russell here. Cool. Uh, Hi, Kate. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm here with my mom too. So um, we live down the West Back line. I've been here all our lives. So um, I just want to say that activity draws people. Okay. And, you know, like it, it's not necessarily, you know, the whole curb appeal thing is wonderful, but if there's nothing happening, okay. then no one's going to stop. Like we have, you know, like I walked through Mark Dell the other day and there was nobody sitting in that lovely little, uh, not so lovely gravel town square, but yeah. the people who always sit on the other corner were there and they were get like, there was three people there talking. So, okay. So actually, and what comes, what other places come to mind? Yeah, so I used yeah. to live in Creemore. Thank you so much okay. for the person who mentioned Creemore. Shout out so to I Cream. actually lived in Creemore prior to their, um, basically prior, prior to sewers coming in, prior to a lot of the development and, uh, you know, Gr uh, Creemore Springs moved in there and really changed the landscape, but also a lot of very, um, I'm just going to say well-to-do people with their Jaguars and Mercedes moved in there too. So I think that um, we have to keep in mind that uh, Markdale is an area that has been, you know, where people seek their affordable and attainable homes. Yes. And it's really been historically a, a service center yes. for the area. And yeah. uh, one of the things like when you compare it to places like, you know, Midlands, wonderful, but it has a waterfront. 
Yeah. Uh, Stratford's wonderful, but it has a river and, a, you know, an internationally acclaimed theater. So I think that some of the comparisons aren't necessarily, um, you, you know, like apples and apples. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say that I think that the thing about Creemore that's really great is you can walk that town, but then they also have outdoor food space, like for experiences. So like their, yeah. their farmer's market is right in their downtown. Right. You can, I always used to take visitors to go and have the tour of the brewery. And you, so, yes, I think someone mentioned in the chat that Chapman's has been missing out on a opportunity of having like a Willy Wonka experience of Chapman's yeah. Yeah. at any given time. And yeah. I just want to make a comment really concerned when Wai Ying said uh, below grade or structure parking, that scares me in that that is, um, you know, like this is the, the, some of these street, streetscapes that you're showing are very urban looking. And you have to understand that I live out of town. When I shop in town, I have to drive into town and, you know, I'm there as it's my service center. I'm not necessarily there to walk the streets for 10 minutes. I'm there to get what I need and get out. So I think that uh, you're really like what you're looking at is really changing the whole dynamic of the community. And um, so I just think that you need to take that in mind that, you know, yeah, there's extra wide streets, but I don't think John wants anybody going and parking in his subdivisions. So um, parking is going to be a big deal. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just going to mention for somebody like Creamore is also not on a main street. So as someone who used to plan uh, parades uh, across those streets, uh, certainly it's great when we had the parade or when the street frolic was on and there and the street is closed for a certain amount of time for pedestrian but we are a, a car culture like we live in the country you really can't live in the country without a car mm -hmm. you can live in Markdale without a car um, mm -hmm. but I think that it, you know we really need to be aware of that situation so thank yeah you. no fair enough and the question that I was asking uh, people were was the from their own perspective, what ingredients for successful, healthy downtowns. And so I wasn't looking for necessarily things that were directly comparable apples to apples. So I am looking for people just based on whatever their opinion is, where those centers are that they think are successful. And then we're gonna dissect them. A lot of the places that have been mentioned, we've done work in them. And so we're gonna pull out what we think is comparable for Mark Dell. And we, we understand the balance that has to be struck with parking versus people places and how much parking and surface or not surface and public or private every single cent town center project that we work on we have to grapple with this and figure out what fits for that particular place and so if i could just add one more comment about the theater rex it's like a, an area for entertainment inside yeah uh, you know they're really trying to get that up and running in collingwood which actually has a larger population, a higher assessment base and probably yep. more reasonable place for something like that. Yep. So I think we also have to just remember who's paying for all this, thanks. For sure, but I want everybody, you know, all ideas at this point in the process are great ideas. So I want no holds barred on anything anybody wants to share, whether it ends up finding a place moving forward or not. I just wanna have everybody give me their brain dump. So don't, um, everything's fair game right now so let me keep going down my list so then I had another Kathy oh sorry I think I saw Joyce you had turned your mic on earlier and I had skipped over you Joyce did you want to yes. yeah there you go Joyce yes thank you yes I, I just put a couple of things in the chat there I used to be um, a housing advocate rental housing advocate yeah um, and um, affordable um, rental housing is really necessary. I, I've heard yeah. it mentioned in town, in town yeah. that there are actually jobs, but there's no there's no place for the yeah. workers to live, so it's actually hard to fill jobs. So, I some of the housing that. should be affordable rental, possible yeah. uh, possible co housing where where people can share, um, um, say, um, recreational spaces or kitchen spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that can work for seniors. It can also work for yeah. young people who are looking for inexpensive, um, you know, yeah. places to live. Small homes um, instead of the usual. I think house sizes, you know, really gotten out of um, out of hand. Um, and in the in this, you know, the area of era of climate change, yeah. um, we really have to think of scaling our the, the kind of silly amounts of spaces that we feel we need and. 
I'd like to see a uh, little develop uh, developments of small homes. Yeah. Um, where which people really want because, you know, if if a small home comes up for sale around here, boy, does it ever get a lot of get scooped up quickly. Get, yeah. Get scooped up. Um, I just love some of these ideas. I feel like the other people have other people have mentioned. Um, it's very exciting to think of revitalizing Markdale. I've been really interested in, in looking at cities around the world too. I know like Barcelona has, has butterfly houses. You know, like there's all sorts yeah. of really wonderful, yeah. wonderful ideas. Also really basic. I'm really um, kind of ricocheting around here, but make sure that there's um, that there's places for people to put their garbage and recycling. Yeah. Lots of yeah. Even where they're selling food or, or fresh food, even yeah. um, composting, food yeah. local. Let's not let's yeah. keep, let's keep chains out. Let's Thornbury and Mark and um, Meaford, for example, you can go in and buy delicious pastries and yeah. you, know, home, yeah. you know, locally made food. Um, so sculpture. Yes, art, a, an active, art. It's just wonderful yeah. to, to travel and to walk in Toronto just from sculpture to sculpture. That creates yeah. uh, a, a whole reason, you know, to go for a yeah. walk. Yeah. So um, anyway, game space for children. Yes. Know, yeah. Think, There's some terrific know. urban places that have outdoor games tables and they're terrifically popular. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I could just go on and on, but okay. I just love what everybody else is saying too. And, 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 and make it an eco friendly, um, you know, uh, streetscape where, where maybe they, you know, people, uh, people can get their water, water uh, bottles filled and yeah. make sure they can deposit their garbage properly where, where, um, you know, we, we minimize the use of plastic bags. I mean, these are practices that come in probably after, maybe after you guys were gone, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> to no, mention those them are, at this point, because they're uh, important. Yeah. Those important are issues. some terrific ideas. Thank you, Joyce. You're welcome. Okay, let me keep going down my list. I have um, Matthew, Nadia. Nadia, is that your, your mic's on? It is. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I do agree, um, you know, with the view of ensuring that there is a lot of friendly uh, gathering spaces. Yeah. Um, so people can linger. Um, yeah. you know, so, you know, so it's, um, it's ensuring that there's, you know, places for cafes and um, yeah. benches and, um, you know, outdoor space. Yeah. Um, and I know we've already heard like a lot of great examples of like smaller towns. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna maybe just, um, I, I, there's a few kind of bigger towns, you know, that come to mind in terms of specific sites within bigger towns. Um, so, you know, when I think about like say New York City, they have like Bryant Park. Mm -hmm. And what's great about Bryant Park is, you know, there's green space and there's all yeah. these, um, there's like a market for all these small businesses yeah know, selling their unique wares. Um, there's flexibility, you know, for also for concerts, yeah. um, you know, for say, like, you know, for fireworks, like fireworks, you know, people love to gather for fireworks on, you know, the long weekends. Yeah. Um, so I think that flexibility um, is really important. Okay. Um, and love that idea of like, you know, having like a ice rink or, you know, other sort of green areas, you know, for, for people to, to play in. Um, I also think of it like Chicago's Millennial Park yeah. and the interactive outside art they have. Yeah. <laughs> so, great. you know, yeah. because it is so, pe like, people, like, you know, from, like, you know, from young to old just gather around yeah. the cloud, right? So yeah. that big silver, you know, bean and spend hours there, you know, just, you know, interacting, you know, with that art. And I think, you know, we have, there's so much artists, you know, there's so many artists in the area. It would yeah. be great to see just, you know, local competitions, right. you know, to, to start thinking about like, you know, these interactive arts and, you know, really bringing that local character to life. Yeah. Um, that, in and that, that is something that can activate a place that Kate was mentioning, the importance of having to have things that animate and activate the spaces that we create and public yeah. art is a great idea um and then in, then um i also think of like in toronto uh 401 richmond 
you know, which is the, the co-op artists and cultural hub, right? So you have this heritage building, yeah. um, you know, it is um, subsidized in, in some way, but, you know, but, it, you know, but, but it houses all these like local artists yeah. and, and it's an artist and culture community that may not have been able to maybe necessarily have a you know, small, small space on their own. Yeah. Um, you know, elsewhere. So, you know, so maybe that is one way to fill some of these buildings. That, yeah, that is a great idea. And a lot of those ideas are coming to the forefront now, post pandemic, or coming out of the pandemic, where there's a lot of innovative ways to um, get empty storefronts populated with other uses. And artists is one of those um, segments of the population. Okay. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Um, let me keep going down my list. Um, Paulette and Peter. Hi. Hi, Paulette. I think this is very exciting. Um, I live in Marcel. Yeah. And I think to improve the possibility of this town is um, something that we desperately need. Okay. And I'm thinking of a town center. It's not really a town. It's I'm from Toronto originally, and there is an area in Toronto that used to have a shopping mall that went bankrupt, and they tore it down and built more pedestrian friendly. The shops at Don Mills. Mm -hmm. Yeah which has parks, skating rinks, yeah. all the outdoor cafes. Mm -hmm. and lots. Um, but it does have a lot of parking around the perimeter. Yeah. So people can drive and then spend the day walking about. Okay. Um, yeah. Chapman's is obviously a major employer in the area and a major benefactor of the area. But um, in all respect to that and what they put into it, sorry, my dog's going crazy. But uh, the truck traffic down Main Street, yeah. if there could be some sort of bypass, yeah, um, it's bad enough Toronto Street, you know, especially on weekends, the traffic flying. Those trucks turning there at that major intersection every mm -hmm. half an hour it's really a deterrent to walk around the area. Yeah, and you know what, uh, Paulette, we heard about that in the earlier session too. And so I'm making a big long list of things I'm going to talk to Chapman's about suggestions and ideas. And so that is one of them. And they are missing an opportunity. Everyone asked me, can we get ice cream? We can't get ice cream, really. <laughs> I, did not, I did not know that. Okay. Thank you, Paulette. Um, almost at the bottom of my list, I have Peter, Rob, D, and uh, Tracy. Okay. Um, oh, is that somebody? Is that Tracy, do you wanna share some thoughts? Yeah, I was just going to be quick and say yeah, that I agree with a, a lot of things that, that were said. I, I really do feel like it should be somewhat of a destination and not just a place where people are, are driving through to get somewhere else. Okay. Um, I think I heard somebody say that it's their service center and that's the yeah. same for me as well. But wouldn't it be great if we could spend three, four hours there. So with some kind of focal point, like a, a purpose, yeah. whether yeah. that be the trail system or an auditorium or something like that, I think it's uh, what, what makes towns the most appealing is the combination of everything, your necessities, yeah. plus those little wondrous finds yeah. that, that you get in a small town. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Um, that would be my. Uh, that is great. And anything, any town come to mind when you 
put all that together in your mind? Um, well, I grew up in Peterborough and, yeah. and Hoburg is probably yeah, um, somewhere one. that I would say has that yeah. combination. They have a gallery, they're close to the water, they have yeah. entertainment on their streets, a market. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, it's it's a great combination. So I yeah. would say that for me is uh, is something that I look to as a... Okay. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah. I'm going to go back to uh, the plan, one of the plans that we were talking about. And I want to leave this on the screen. I want Robin to um, post that third polling question uh, before we start this. I want to drill down into the drawing that's on the screen. So I want to understand, um, of those of you who are on the call, how often you come to downtown Markville whether it's once a week or a couple of times a week or never, a few times a year. Okay, so that's interesting. So over half of you are coming at least once a week between the once a weeks and the at least once a week is um, clearly the majority. So you are frequenting the downtown regularly. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so I'm going to just delete that. So now I've got the um, the plan up that Wai Ying was presenting. I want to mark this up with comments that people have on the plan. Um, we're going to be using this content and tweaking it based on what we're hearing in these two workshops and using it for an online survey where we'll put out to the community and get a sense of whether people are agreeing or disagreeing with the various component parts of the plan. So I'm not gonna ask overall, do you agree or disagree? But I want, I'll ask questions like, do you agree or disagree with the notion of this connection? Or do you agree or disagree with the notion of this kind of long-term idea of a roundabout? Or I agree or disagree with a, a park located in this general um, location. So I want to understand from everybody on the call, and I'm not going to go down the list. So now you can just raise your hand, wave it, or raise the hand with the icon. Let Yang know that you want to talk. Your comments specifically on what you're seeing here. So any part of it that we're going to mark up uh, digitally on the screen. So just wait for a minute, gather your thoughts, and any part that you want to pick apart, pull apart anything at all or we can also go back to the larger context uh, drawing so does anybody observations on what you're seeing yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm here again. sorry. Oh. It's I'll go. john van bearden here um, yeah, okay, I, again, john. I just see lack of parking okay so um, let's let's just take a minute and, and deal with the parking address the parking component. And then I, I see Joyce and Barbara and Kathy. So um, Wai Ying, can you just weigh in a little bit on parking and feel free to annotate the drawing as you go along? I'm going to open my annotation menu. Um, I know there was a suggestion about underground parking, but that's very cost prohibitive, I would think, in a small community. Uh, yeah. Land costs just don't reflect putting parking underground. So um, it just I just don't see that being it's um that's more of a GTA type of thing. Or underground, or you also talk about it being at grade uh, uh, underneath. So why didn't you want to just yeah. talk about that? I mean, uh, to be honest, we haven't done uh, an in-depth analysis, obviously, of the parking um, provisions um, to support what we're drawing here. I think notionally, what we're suggesting is that there still remains, for instance, some surface parking in behind the buildings, like in these mm -hmm. areas, for for instance, mm -hmm. would be, you know, parking at, at grade that's maintained. Um, and as I mentioned last time, you know, we're, we're hoping to expand the ability to have an on-street parking uh, on all of the streets that come into the downtown. You know, one of the, and I'm glad you raised this, the, the cost prohibitiveness or the attractiveness of mm -hmm. development, um, you know, for when there isn't, um, parking to support it. So we've shown in, in I think it's option two, 
uh, an idea for going up to six stories. Um, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, but six stories when you look at one level of parking below the site uh, can be supported in terms of just the, 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 the spatial requirements. Um, but, you know, we obviously acknowledge that in order to be more attractive and um, I guess make development more economically feasible, there's got to be a bit of flexibility in terms of the height of the ultimate, like the ultimate height of the building that's down here. So we've shown six. Um, and you know, I did allude to the fact that if, you know, if it goes beyond six to something like eight to make it economically viable, you know, that's something that you know, we'll have to deal with um, later on. Yeah, but, but again, uh, uh, again, the, the more the denser you go, the more parking requirements. Right. Um, yep. What I've seen right. done in Europe and is quite successful is actually at grade parking on the first level, right. like like uh, and they yep. just they screen it and architecturally right. it looks quite good, and then uh, the commercial yep. component, residential components are above, so that yep. may be an option also. Yeah, that could work here. For instance, I'm going to draw on here. So like we've done projects where you know we're showing you know lined uses on the front side and then there's like you say there's that grade parking below portion of the building yeah. um in these units here i'm imagining that they're kind of like um a deck parking situation where they pull into their units right and then there would be additional oh gosh this is really hard to draw with this but you know additional parking here you know that serves the commercial the commercial uses and and so forth. So there's lots of ways to do it. And I have to say, you know, we haven't looked at the, looked at it that closely, but yeah, there's um, still quite flexible in how we- Yeah, again, again, with the attraction of outside, whether it's weekenders, people coming into the community, if mm -hmm. they can't find a place to park, they're just gonna move on or not come. So um, I think that's critical. Yeah, but I mean, to Wyeing's point, still on street parking, still yep. some off street parking in locations. And I gotta say, I go to, I'm a town and village and city visitor. And if I want to go yeah. to that place, there is nothing stopping me from going to that place. I will find parking. And remember that we're, we, we talked about what's within a five minute and a 10 minute walk. And yeah. so the, the part of the challenge is to tell people where else there is to park. There's a ton of parking just off the right side of the screen that's associated with the school that's, or the community center that's available. And, so I think that's part of the messaging around okay. parking. And if I can just make a final comment, I really love that roundabout and that yeah. entrance to King Edward Park. That park is so okay. underutilized and maybe next on the uh, on the list of areas to look at for the municipality. It's a large tract of land. Yeah, uh, it needs cleaning up. Uh, you could have additional parking there. Maybe a band shell. Maybe put the uh, new municipal hall uh, beside the arena. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> okay. there's opportunities okay. there, but that's the next okay. project. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, Joyce. You're up next, and then I have Barbara and Elizabeth and Kathy. Joyce, and you'll keep okay, an just, eye on the chat. Just, just, yeah. just a quick. Uh, I don't. I don't know whether these are meant to be actually building designs or just kind of spaces, but I just see um, where you have where you have housing. It's nice to group people. Um, and, um, in a kind of circular design with courtyard in the middle and then parking at the back behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and that clearly creates community, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, so that, this, that it, basically. Yeah. so that's what you're, what you're describing, this that's nice it. housing yeah. and then it faces onto the green space in the front. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I think, and also in the third scenario where we're kind of, you know, expanding beyond our bounds, you'll see the full, the fulsome articulation of that courtyard idea as if ever that beer site um, beer store site redevelops it would have the same yeah. kind of condition yeah that's over here yeah um barbara did you have there okay. you go barbara go ahead hi i was just um looking at it and thinking that it would be really nice to have um, as Joyce said, buildings around a center square with uh, a fountain or something for a space for performance or whatever. I, I guess I'm finding that little green space looks a little small or something. Oh, it's why well, yeah. I don't know. 
It's hard to say. <laughs> from okay, a drawing. Let's, let's see. How big is that? Do you want to? I don't know if you it's said it. It's a, it's a quarter acre. So I think it's 0.25 acres, which is a reasonable and fairly typical size for a, um, a village type of square. Um, I think it recognizes too that we have this amazing a large park over here just a block away yeah. and then you have your active fields like to the to the west of here so it's yeah. not trying to duplicate some of those functions and activities but trying to really create a, a new language for um, green space in in the downtown core. Um, right. Yeah and yes absolutely the things you mentioned water features and all of those things can go in here. I think what's nice about it too is that you know oftentimes when we're we're doing plans similar to this, we like to feel that there's eyes on the park and that that has a presence and it's um it's front and center to some degree, right? And mm -hmm. and yet still protected and nestled uh, within and amongst buildings, so it kind of has the best of both worlds. Okay. Um, yeah, and it does discourage. I I think in our designs we find that if there aren't enough eyes on it, it becomes a place where not such nice things happen. Right, right. Yeah, so it's a fine balance. Uh, I totally agree. Right. Um, I also wanted to comment on the parking because um, Markdale is in Gray County where there's uh, skews to uh, more seniors mm -hmm. and people tend to like retire in the town. So there's a lot of seniors that can't probably walk that far, you know? So I think you should take that into consideration when you're looking at parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's just, so again, to, to remind everybody where that, so right now there's, there's parking here and here and here associated with that building and here, parking over here. There's parking, it's still gonna be parking all the way along the side all street. The along the street yeah. side parking. So, and you can see the cars parked along Main Street here. So, I mean, we did purposefully, um, we're purposefully showing a plan. We could show this all as parking, but in order to get one of the really important raw ingredients for a successful town center, we've got to find more places for people to live in the center and to people's right. points about attainable and affordable housing. This is an ideal location to try and achieve some of those goals and ambitions okay um so you. you know it is it's absolutely a, a choice that we've aired on the side of building okay thanks thank you thanks guys okay so let's go with um barbara now and then i have elizabeth and then kathy barbara that was me that just oh, sorry that was barbara <laughs> oh i'm off my list sorry i'm, I'm mixed up on my list sorry that elizabeth next i have Hi, um, I just wanted to applaud, yes, density, um, because, you know, if you just look around other cities and other towns, the more dense the downtown town core is, the more people there are just walking around, not driving yeah. around. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I do live outside of town. I do have to drive in to use the services, um, yeah. but you know, parking really is not a problem in this town. There is loads of street parking. Okay, already. okay, okay. Um, I'm curious, I, I love the map that you showed with the um, perimeter walkway. Yeah, let me go back. Most sort of um, developments that could be uh, up for discussion in the future. This one you're referring to? Yeah, uh, it wasn't that one. It was um, more of the downtown core, and it oh, you know, okay. sort of showed building on the hospital site. The okay, old let hospital me show site. you that. One. So that one was um, scenario yeah, three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's a little bit of a chat discussion going on now about the park and the arena and how. <laughs> so I was going to bring that up. <laughs> Yeah, it's just sort of kind of a forgotten space. And it is a huge chunk of real estate. Yeah. And also sort of further west, there's an, a complete empty block owned by Chapman's, which is yeah. just such a golden opportunity for something for this town. And yeah. I'm wondering if that's... Um, 
up for discussion, not right now, but in the future. Well, you know, I'm going to add that to my list to talk to the Chapman people about. Um, but we can, it's very funny you're talking about this because when we started, we were trying to stay within the red boundary. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Why Ying? Always, because this is always what oh. says she goes outside of the red boundary. And I'm so afraid to just, tell you that I actually did a sketch for the park, but I, we didn't show it because I was afraid oh. I would get in trouble. <laughs> no, I would so. love to see it because it's just so underutilized. It just looks like a dusty place that cars drive through on their way to something mm. else. That's what I figured too. And so I'll, I'll give you the three takeaways that I uh, that um that I got from looking at that site, which is the parking and circulation is inefficient as it is. Right. So you can see even in the in this little snippet of the park here, I've taken that road away that goes between the diamond Good. and the green spaces. You don't need it. Um, I thought about reorganizing all the parking along a circular drive that actually gives the baseball diamond, if it is to stay, its own space, because right now it's cut off. Right. Um, yeah. And so definitely, and then relocating the playground so that it's front and center and not kind of hidden away. Um, yeah relocating the playground front and center near the you know near the street where people can see it near the entrance you know surrounded with picnicking areas and trails and then creating a little space beside the library that is really just a quiet library outdoor space so two different types of rooms or outdoor rooms within so there's lots of possibilities and ideas that I started to think about so when you yeah when that chat started I was thinking yes this is my chance <laughs> yeah, for sure. And and as far as building height, you know, there's a little bit of a chat going on now. I again, mm -hmm. I don't know about infrastructure, um, but density. This town is dying for rental housing. Yeah, and I've heard that so it, many times. It's dying for it, and yeah. you know, all these new housing developments is great because people are going to come and they're going to, you know, have all kinds of ideas and energy and economic opportunities to create things, but. You know, people who work at Chapman's and some of the other factories in town need rental housing. These, some, yeah. a lot of the people who are in our area are not, you know, destined for home ownership right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, really good point. And I heard that, Elizabeth, when I talked to some of the business owners that they have such a hard time getting uh, staff for yeah. their restaurants and cafes. And, and it's just, it's really hard to keep them. So um, that's, that's a good perspective to hear. Yeah, awesome. Love this. Thank, thank so you. encouraging. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Don, I think it's also worth noting that we're not we're not through this plan um, suggesting that the businesses should go away. Um, right. Yeah. Businesses that are yeah. there that are still thriving and viable and want to be there can stay there for as long as they want until eternity. We're not suggesting that they go anywhere. Right. We're presenting a plan that if um, if whenever uh, yeah. they decide to move or want to redevelop and see value in redevelopment, that this is one picture. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. of a way that they might redevelop that would um, achieve some of the town's um, objectives as well as their own. So that's all I wanted no, to say. I think I inadvertently lowered the hand of, um, was there another Kathy that had? Hi, I, I Hi, had. Was that Kathy? Kathy, um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Kathy Fraser. Yeah, sorry, I inadvertently yeah. lowered your hand. So please go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, I've been listening to all the comments and it's quite interesting. Um, again, with the sketch, it's hard to tell. I was thinking it was kind of building heavy, even though I do agree housing is much needed, especially for affordable housing. And I stress affordable because I still think we're not talking about the maybe the right economics. Yeah. But um, I'm also what do, worried. About what that. does that mean? What does that mean to you when you say affordable housing? What does that mean from your low own? income? Um, okay. Even people on fixed incomes like ODSP, okay. yeah, working with Gray County to provide. We still we do have some buildings here in Markdale, but we could always use some more because um, okay. throughout Gray County, um, they need more apartments for the low economic age or uh, bracket. Okay. I also wonder about, I think this is great, but we also can't take away from the main street and the businesses. We have to highlight yeah. them. They've been here for years, many yes. of them. So yeah. we want to work with that. Yes. Um, yeah. And make that a highlight as well and not just that back area. Yeah. Yeah, um, completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah. 
And uh, I was going to say, again, I missed the first question, but just a mix of businesses. It's wonderful at night. I walk every night. And when uh, the Taekwondo has classes, there's people on the street. So it's a mix, a really big mix of businesses that you want to attract. Okay. Uh, the other thing about the recreation and the the park, I know it's pandemic and so it might not look like it's used, but it actually has ball almost every night, hockey every night, there's uh, kids playing basketball and the playground. So it mm. does, doesn't seem like it is with the pandemic, but it is greatly used, but it could use a refurbish for sure. And, and you mean the, with the big the, park, this big park, the, the King 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 Yeah, okay. But yep. there's also Rotary Park and we need to yes. highlight what we have too. Yes. So. Um, there is a, supposedly a recreation master plan, so help, hopefully that will take in some of these comments and we'll work to get something within Gray Highlands because we have to work with all the towns. Yes, a... yes, connected and relate to the yeah. others. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Anybody else want to weigh in on the drawing that's on the screen? Anything in the chat box, Yying, that we need to No, just another point out. from Kate, um, you know, building on what Kathy mentioned about there's lots of things happening um, that might not be apparent in the, in the, in the park today. So, um, yeah, fairs and events and stuff. Yeah, okay. Currently in King Edward Park that are regularly mm -hmm. planned, okay. That is great. Um, let me just go ahead here. Um, oh, sorry, that's my. Um, the single biggest opportunity for change and the, the biggest obstacle to change. Anybody want to weigh in a couple of thoughts on that, either in the chat box or just turn your mics on and call it out biggest opportunity for change within let's focus on the well if we can within those two red parcels but otherwise in downtown markdale biggest obstacle to change anything coming in on the chat why ying not at the moment biggest opportunity and and some of the ideas that people talked when we were going over the uh, ingredients for successful places. There were some very interesting ideas that were brought up that obviously we heard about um, affordable, attainable rental housing. We heard about um, the green space and what kinds of things could be in that. I heard about food and landscape, heard about arts and art, artist co-ops. Anything we should know as we, um, and parking, obviously, we're gonna have to figure out the questions we craft on parking for this survey. So there's a chat in here, sorry, a response is the answer to both is the same, people, people who accept and want change compared to people who want things to stay the same. Okay, okay. That's very good. Interesting. Okay. Betty and Roy. Yes. Um, the question I have is, uh, you folks are eventually going to have a report that council's going to see it and all that good stuff. How is the message, however it comes out at the end, get communicated to the public, the citizens that are living within the Markdale and environment? How do they know that the exercise is underway it, and what the it, findings it, are? And, and the, the, you're gonna have some results. Yep. Um, how is that going to, how is the communication gonna filter yeah. down to the general public yeah. so that they can yeah. think about it, 
um, if they wish to interact with council, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but if you just, if, if, for instance, it's just put on a website. Right. It's not, I it's not. Right. Very few people will know about it. Yeah. So let me tell you what a few ideas that came up uh, during the conversation, some of the conversations I had with counselors and they were, were ideas like, um, we can put together information panels or displays and put them in Foodland or Dollarama or Tim Hortons or put them in shop front windows, especially the vacant shop front windows. It would be a great thing to make it really accessible in the library, in the community centers. We can put together an information package and we are going to be doing this, an information package uh, and send that out to counselors so that they can send that out to their network. We've made some really good connections with some business owners. The previous call had the owner of Fire and Ice. And so we'll make sure they get information so they can send it out to other uh, business owners they associate with or other uh, re uh, the residents that they have as, as staff. So we're gonna use a bunch of different ways, flyers. So we'll just try and use old school ways of mailing things out and then new ways of sharing things virtually. So we will yeah. try and do a really a big push to get it out in a way that it's accessible to everybody. And in fact, just to, just to build on that, on the circulation list, um, we have about a thousand people in Markdale that will, that will be notified of, of this. Oh, that are, 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 have already identified themselves as being interested in the project. That's yeah. The yeah, that's the yeah. circulation that the town will be doing, yes. Yeah, and even putting it in the municipal building, everybody goes into the municipal building for this or that. And so, but I think a, a good way would be to, and we've done this in other projects, get it in the shop front window. So if we can distill it all on a poster, I once said on another project, if we can do it all on 11 by 17 sheet, so everybody has to hang it on their refrigerator, that would be great too. I have some stuff in the chat box, Donna, that I can share with you. Yep. Um, again, John, municipal town, town hall downtown. Yes, um, yep. You know where that's coming from. Okay, so it's uh, something like a smaller version of a St. Lawrence market. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, great tenant businesses for the stores that are already there. So filling up the empty storefronts, that seems yep. to be... Yep. Yeah. Um, and then there's the opposite, which is don't move the city, the, the civic center downtown because they don't yeah. go downtown for that reason. So again, to your point, there's always a, you know, a yeah. flip side to all the all the uh, yeah. opinions. Uh, also, a tax break for the for the empty storefronts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Storefronts are empty because they get a tax break to oh. keep their space empty. So you want right. to maybe find a way. Yeah. To get them. Yeah. Okay. That is, we have heard this in many other centers. Okay, we, we um, heard that we hear this in Uxbridge, Wyoming. This is exactly yeah. the same thing. I was going to say to penalize them, but I don't want to use that word here. But it seems like that's mm. kind of what, you know, the, the opposite of of that would be. Um, open air events in the space, and I assume when you say in the space, meaning the new, yeah. the new idea for the village square. Ah. Uh, let me see, Joyce has her hand raised. So let's just take a break and hear from Joyce. Joyce, go ahead. Yeah, and just a just point about the ta about taxes. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if people are incentivized to keep stores empty, then that incentive has to be removed. So right. that's, exactly. that's, that's, yeah. that's at the level of the taxation system. So I'd be really interested to go into that another, uh, with yeah. somebody else at another time. Like why, why is that yeah. tax incentive even there? You know, right. so that's, right. yeah, that's just poor planning, yeah. Okay, yes. we'll try and find out some more about Thanks. that. Thanks. And what I said earlier, there are lots of examples of those owners without tenants in the retail spaces offering it to community cultural arts groups to use um, for, for their purposes. And it really helps to activate and energize the downtown. Um, okay. So just a question to end on, just, you know, give me a word or two. What would a draw or attract you to downtown Markdale? So just people can just shout out or put it in the, the chat box. What would attract or draw you to? And I know one of those things is a town hall. John, I've heard that. So that's on the list. 
what would attract or draw you to downtown Markdale? And I heard arts center. I heard a um, bigger, a larger variety of, of shops and services. We're hearing that what won't attract some people is the civic center, the okay. town hall. Yeah, that's, I mean, we know that that is, already we can tell that's a very hard button. Good food, parking, good restaurants. Okay. Good food, parking. Yeah. Co cost, finding a balance between tourists and weekenders um, okay. and permanent residence needs. Yeah. Uh, we heard this as well. Unique shops and art shops and food shops, clothing shops. Yeah. Okay. And, and co concerts. Yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, that is so important to activate the place. Okay. Affordability and variety again. Okay. Maybe a dog park. Maybe a lot of people walk their dogs downtown. Mm -hmm. Maybe a dog park. <laughs> <laughs> okay um i want to talk just about what happens next so we are um again have tons of notes from both this session and the one we had just before we're going to use the content that you've seen uh, for an online survey and ask lots of questions about all the component parts of the drawings you saw, we, we'll ne we never ask a question about the whole plan. Do you like it or not like it? We're interested about the bits and pieces so that we can pull out the bits and pieces that have lots of support and cobble them together into another version of a plan. We want to um, look to having a second session in early June so that we can report out on what we heard at the workshops, the results of the survey, and the kind of refined vision for downtown Markdale. Um, all information is gonna be posted on the webpage and um, for Roy, your comment about what other ways are we gonna to use to communicate the, the findings. We will get working on that right, right away and try to get information out into the community, into Markdale so that they know this is underway. Um, please send any other comments to ecdev at grayhighlands.ca. Michelle and the whole staff team are doing a great job collecting everything and then they package it up and we'll be sending it to us. Um, Joyce, is that your hand? Is that a new hand or is that a hand from before? And then I see Kathy, your hand is up. That must be an old hand. Okay, okay. I will lower your hand. And Kathy, yeah. go, go ahead. I just wondered, I just wondered you were recording this. Is it available for others to yes. see? Yes. Yes. So, so we are going to be posting it on the project webpage at grayhighlands.biz. Um, so both sessions. And so please, right. yeah, tell your friends and family to um, yeah. listen to the recordings and hear both conversations because they were a little bit different, both sessions. And so it's intriguing to hear the different perspectives. The website again, sorry? Um, it's uh, grayhighlands.biz. And there is a, I, can't, I believe we have a dedicated web page to this project. Okay. And Graham, your hands up. Just a, a question on the timeline. I know you spoke about um, when you'll be dealing with the feedback and the next plan. Yeah. Um, just on a, a longer range, how long before we might see yeah. doubles in the ground? Is this you yeah. know two years, five years, ten years? Um, you know, I'm going to say it's not two years. It's it's a long process to go from this high level visioning that has some level of community and and municipal support to then going to the next stage of um, figuring out exactly what development will be. Why do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, I agree, not two years. I, I personally think it's, you know, five years, because remember too that I'm imagining the next step after the master plan vision that provides the picture for the municipality to um, implement, they still need to either, you know, revisit their zoning, right? Change their planning framework they need to uh, find, I suppose, a partner 
to help them develop the lands. Um, and there's lots of different ways they can do that yeah. too. So that's a process unto itself to there's figure lots, out. What... Yeah. So yeah, no sooner than five years. I think when that's would, um... when would the master plan itself be completed, or what's the oh. progress schedule on that? This summer. Yeah, so our work is done um, the early part of the summer where we'll be reporting out to council on what we heard and what we're suggesting. And then part of our recommendations would be next steps where they take this high level visioning down the pipe to the next steps. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for both your time and, and for the visioning. Okay, thanks Graham. Does anybody have anything else they wanna share before we end the recording? Why do you see anything else? Anybody asking to talk in the? So entertained by some of these comments. Ice cream parlor, um, lactose free ice cream. Yes. yes. Come full circle of this conversation, which is great. It's all about the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for carving out a bit of time. It's been a really interesting conversation, and we're uh, actually looking forward to getting into dissecting what we heard, crafting the survey. So keep an eye out for the survey. Uh, keep an eye out on the web page, and keep an eye out just for um, information on the project posted around in and around town. So thank you uh, very much, everybody. I'll ask Robin to end the recording. <laughs>